Um, and when when I analyze this kind of um, discourse, I look at um, tactics such as titling, the descriptions, um, the subjects, the list goes on and on, not to get what they, the subjects are saying, but rather a context of what uh, bestiality is presented as. So we are going to watch um, a very short documentary. Um, so yeah. Well, I have vaginal sex with my miniature stallion. Uh, he's not a whole lot larger than most humans. Um, he is a bit bigger, but not uncomfortably so. Um, I, I like to, to suck on him orally. Uh, and he especially enjoys that. I have anal sex with, with, the, with the miniature stallion. He kind of tricks me. And it's... It's pleasurable, but it's not real intense. It's like I said, the, the the pleasure that I get from it is more from knowing how much he enjoys having sex with me. He, he tends to tell me about it. He talks a lot. He grunts and, and wiggers and, and blows in my ear, etc. And that is very erotic to me, more so than the physical sex. When he's courting me, as it were, trying to entice me to uh, to bed down or kneel down. Um, he, he does a lot of, uh, um, I call it a hubba hubba. <laughs> he just kind of goes Grr, and makes his little hubba hubba noise to me. Um, and then and then once he's in, I mean, for, for every stroke that he does, he makes this big grunt, grunting noise. And then when he orgasms, he makes an even bigger grunting noise. <laughs> but he tends to like to hold on with his teeth. And I actually have some scars on my back from where he's bitten on to me, just hanging on. Uh, they do the same thing with mares when they have sex, and all these mares have fur to hang on to. He tends to get a big chunk of skin with me, and that can be quite painful, but usually I don't even notice until after the fact because I'm so caught up in the moment, and then I get up to the house, and Ellie says, oh, I see you've been down fooling around. You've got a big bite mark on your back again. <laughs> So I thought this video was great in that it shows um, a one-on-one -on -one documentary or interview with a zoo file. Um, it's interesting, which I'll talk about later, but I think it's interesting that the subjects there were in traditional bottom roles, um, indicating that the non-human animal was the initiator of some sort um, in penetration with the human. But before we leave this webpage, um, I think it's very important to note here, the description is, viewers, I do not in any way condone this nor take part in bestiality slash zoophilia. That said, enjoy the video. And if you look on the side, we have videos saying donkey sex, love if you uh, like a big schlong, horse sex, uh, marigasm. These are not videos that look very professional. They look as if um, the videos are very uh, mocking. And in addition, the title of this is called Horse Humper Bestiality Documentary. So that just kind of gives you a sense that, okay, this should be taken as a joke before you even watch the video. And I think that's super fascinating. And that's where I get at when I say that bestiality is, oh, that bestiality is very one-sided and that it doesn't provide means to interpret bestiality as consensual. And I think that's very problematic. I feel that, um, you know, we need to be viewing discourse as unbiased as we can and provide four means outside of the consent abuse binary. Um, and so that video right there is interesting because um, I think there's a paradox between the joking manner of the title, the um, description, yet in the video, the subjects are very clinical in their um, understanding of bestiality. They're very serious with it. They're not laughing as, as it was a joke. Um, you know, they laugh because they enjoy it. That's who they are. Um, and I think that we need to, you know, look more into that and not just assume that those people are abusing that, their horse. You know, they have a relationship of some kind with their miniature stallion. And I think that's really interesting. Um, and so to analyze this, I bring in Foucault here in his theory on Ciencia Sexualis, which um, in turn provides a capital T truth um, to the viewers of this video. Um, I think it's great here just because um, we in this room might not have as much experience with bestiality or zoophilia as the one of the uh, firsthand subjects there. They're the ones who are living that day by day. Um, most of us do not live that. Um, so we in turn 
assume that that is the truth of bestiality. Um, and I think it's interesting because of that paradox of joking versus um, serious that we do get this like, oh, well, it's a joke and leave it at that. Um, so I think there needs to be more work done on that. Um, I also was going to talk about a Vice documentary, but I only have five minutes, so I need to jump to the next part. But um, just look at bestiality documentaries all over. Um, you know, Zoo, for example, that was um, taken from Animal Passions. There's Animal Passions 2. Um, there's a Vice documentary called Donkey Sex. Um, it's really interesting to see how people talk about bestiality and don't really allow anyone to find it conceptual. It's immediately deemed as abuse, which I think is problematic. Um, but consent, that's obviously huge. Um, okay. So I talked about how queering communication to include interspecies relationality is necessary to shape bestiality as outside of this consent abuse binary. Um, we see that consent is not, a, not necessarily a verbal yes or no from your partner. It is um, a multiplicity of tactics, including body language, the setting, um, yes, verbal if that person is able to verbalize in a coded language, um, among many other things. Consent is not just yes, no. So we need to fight that. Um, and we need to view, you know, we need to examine consent outside of something where um, the partner would say, yes, I want to do this, or no, I do not. And non-human animals and bestiality are a perfect example of that because they don't have the means to communicate in a coded language as do um, you know, able human-human relations. Um, and I think that that video, uh, Horse Home for Bestiality documentary, is really interesting. Uh, earlier in the video, I didn't show you, um, the uh, female individual in the video said that he, referring to the miniature stallion, tried climbing on top of me. So the next thing I know, my pants are down and I'm bending over for him. I can't resist. So do the binary paradigms of consent and rape permit communication where the positions of top and bottom come into play with power here? I think it's problematic to say that because this person was bottoming, that she has no power. That's definitely wrong. But in order to um, examine consent here, I think we need to play more with that and see that, yes, the non-human animal was indeed penetrating her and therefore Topping it, the miniature stallion, I assume, could have walked away if um, he or she or they did not want to initiate this um, sexual act. So, you know, I can't say that that was consensual or not, but I think it's interesting that, um, you know, it doesn't have to be top and bottom. It could be much more um, multi sided. Um, so, I think it's important to remember that consent is not just one thing. And I think that video shows that very well. Um, and lastly, I'm not going to talk about this too much, but I do examine legal discourse surrounding bestiality. Um, it is illegal in 41 states in the United States. Almost all of those um, laws are in their penal codes, which are interesting because penal codes refer to human-human relations, um, not homosexual, of course, but um, criminal laws that um, are most of the time within oh, within two human two or more humans. So it's interesting that we give the non-humans the voice, saying that it is abuse. In California's penal code, uh, 286.5, the language says that any person who sexually assaults any animal, sexu so sexually, uh, is guilty of a misdemeanor. And you know, it makes sense to me that they would want to say abuse. Otherwise, it would be too vague um, to you know, to call someone guilty of a misdemeanor, yet every time it's immediately assault or abuse, and there's no subsection that um, pertains to um, animals initiating some form of sexual conduct. And I think that we need to um, go into more detail on that. Um, I can talk about this for days, but I can't, so I tried to wrap it up um, by saying that we have to question binaries, especially human, non-human, and consent abuse, because I don't think that binaries allow for everyone to fit into, and I think that bestiality is a perfect example of that. I think that um, bestiality tries to actually fight those binaries, which is why we need to include bestiality in, the queer, um, in queer theory and queer discourse, um, and not just leave it at that, make sure that we fully talk about it in an unbiased